Right, I'm very excited. It's putter fitting day. You might be wondering why I've got no clothes on. I'm about to get dressed, but what do you wear for a putter fitting? Never let it be said that I'm too afraid to tackle the big topics in golf. I mean, wearing a full golf outfit feels a bit too keen, like one of those blokes who wears a full kit with long socks and shin pads and boots just to go and watch Arsenal. But if I turn up in just a t-shirt and trainers, are they gonna think I'm some kind of scruffy no-hoper? I don't mean literally just a t-shirt and trainers. I wouldn't recommend turning up to any fitting naked from the waist down. Hey, you need to put some clothes on. Okay, so you'll be relieved to see that I've now got some clothes on. I just went for like normal golf clothes in the end. I'm down in Hitchin, going to a place called Custom Lab Golf for the putter fitting. So some of you may know that I recently sold my normal putter, which was a Ping Answer, and another putter that I had, which I kind of sometimes switched in and out of the bag, which was a Ping Gnome. So the Answer was fine. I'd had that in the bag for a couple of years, got on fine with it, but I'd never really fallen in love with it. It wasn't a putter that I'd actually picked. I've never actually gone out and selected a putter and I've certainly never had a putter fitting. So it'll be interesting really to find out what a putter fitting is all about and obviously what it brings up, what it kind of recommends for me. So let's get in there and find out. Of course we keep on going, though everybody know it. The truth about our way we tied it loosens up, I'm sorry. Be cool, go on and fake it. We still know we will break it. We make the same mistakes we always made and now let's face it. So this is Rob, the man who's hopefully going to transform my putting. What are we going to do today, Rob? Uh, so we're going to do a uh, putter fitting and analysis session using uh, the Sam Putt Lab uh, by Science and Motion Sports. Uh, we're going to look at your current stroke, current setup, check out exactly what's going on within those, and then we'll see if there's any putters out there that match those slightly better um, and give us better results than what you're, you're currently using. What kind of people do you normally get in for putter fittings? Is it mainly better players or all sorts? No, no, fully varied across the, across the board from uh, pros all the way up to um, beginners that are just getting into the game. It can benefit absolutely anybody. And someone who's never had a putter fitting or even thought about particularly what putter they're using, what kind of benefits could they get from a putter fitting? Higher levels of consistency. Quite often we'll see people that just really struggle with general alignment, um, so we'll go through and just check out exactly where they're aligning the putter to begin with, and they bring in the putter face back square, and yeah, general consistency, better roll on the ball, hopefully uh, fewer putts over the, the rounds. That sounds good. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Let's give it a go. So the putter that I'm using here is a tailor-made spider that my mate lent me. I've been using it for the last month or so. Normally you would take in your ordinary putter, but because I've already sold mine, I can't do that. I'm an idiot. So is there any um, tendencies? Um, I'd say I miss more putts right than left. Um, yeah, that'd be the sort of performance tendency. Yeah. Um, if I'd start guessing about my sort of setup and stroke, I'd probably say that if anything, I was kind of have my feet a little bit open, maybe even shoulders. Okay. Um, I don't feel like I have a massive sort of arc in my stroke. Yeah. Um, but you know, maybe my perception isn't the reality. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never really been particularly analytical about putting. Yeah. Um, so. You know, I've never measured my stroke, I don't even really use like mirrors and that kind okay. of stuff. So um, I'll practice putting a little bit more, practicing trying to hold putts or you know, pace control that kind of stuff, rather than a sort of technical, you know, whereas I might look at my golf swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never looks at my putting okay. stroke, I don't think. So. Well, the machine will uh, yeah, tell us exactly what's going on. I might find out all sorts. Are there any design styles of putters that you really don't like or any that you do particularly like? Um, so obviously I've used a blade more than anything. Yeah. Um, I'm not completely against anything really. I mean, if it was something that looked like a kind of, you know, crazy spaceship with yeah. like, eyes coming out of it and all sorts, then and that worked the best, I'd have to probably convince myself that it was yeah. worth it. Um, because I just feel like even if I didn't mind it, I might go off it at some stage. Yeah. Whereas um, if 
it was a slightly more classic thing, then I imagine I'd have sort of more of a long lasting love for it. But at the end of the day, if I'm holding parts, exactly. then I'm not going to care really. Exactly. What well, you'll see it's hard to love it. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, even this is quite an unconventional yeah, yeah, thing, but I've been getting on quite well with this for a yeah. couple of weeks. So, um, no, I'd say, yeah, blades, if I was just going to go and buy a part off the shelf yeah. and not have any kind of fitting, I'd be testing blades as my starting point, but I'd also be comparing that to other bits and pieces. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of looking for a coach at the moment, but I've been having lessons um, over the last couple of years. So you looked at the short game pattern? Or just no. mainly long? Uh, mainly long. Um, one or two kind of quick looks at putting, but yeah. not much. Okay, just want to get a couple of flat dogs Yeah. <laughs> Set up fairly good from that point of view. Okay, so we'll see what the results say. One thing that I would personally like to see is the ball position forward slightly. Yeah. Um, if you imagine, the way I like to think of it, it's hands coming together, therefore putter should sit quite central. Mm -hmm. You've actually got ball central, which pushes the putter back, okay. which can give you a negative angle that way. Right. So your hands are sitting a little bit behind. Yeah. But we'll see if the, the results actually do show that. So Rob's just putting a little device on the putter shaft that tracks everything. So you want to have a couple of that just get used to it, add a little bit of weight to it. Yeah. Do any pre-shot routine, any alignment of the ball, just do exactly how you would do it. Okay. And um, you're out the course really fine. summary of the stroke mm -hmm. broken down into uh, different areas so the first area is uh, what we call tendency that's taking into account face aim face impact putter path the impact location and the face rotation uh, basically this works like a traffic light system okay. so 75 percent we get the green light and it's all all of the data was gathered from uh, 99 tour players all of their results put in together Four green lights is fantastic to start with. Good news. We've got timing, which is your swing durations and your rhythm. Right. Consistency is repeatability. Yeah. Um, and then the overall rating is based on 50% consistency and 25% of the other two. So yeah, great start. We'll go down through some various screens, just see if anything jumps out. So this is just looking at your face aim. Okay. So when I was standing down the end there, I could see that your tendency was to set up addressed slightly left yeah so you're averaging 1.2 degrees closed so that's interesting actually because if i had to guess i'd have said that my face was actually over right kind of thing okay it's interesting yeah yeah no you're definitely down the end there it was okay. looking left it could just be that 
because you set up quite open, yeah, that it looks right to where you're setting up and yeah, your general yeah, so alignment is. So open it's, to my feet, it's open to your feet, but still close to target. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Good thing is consistency is up there as well on that. So mm -hmm. it's far easier to tweak around with someone's alignment when they're doing something consistently and when then they're left, right, left, right. Yeah. Other than impact, your face is actually slightly open okay. on average, and the putter path is traveling 0.6 to the left as an average. So we've got top view here, looking at, um, basically this is the backstroke and coming through. Okay. So, so you can take it on the outside. And yeah, if anything, you're taking it slightly outside and then coming across to the left slightly. Mm -hmm. But with the path, funny enough, the last three were very, very, very square. I think you hold two out of the last three, which says that when you're coming through slightly square, are you actually? Yeah. It's a very straight back, straight through looking stroke. Yeah, like I said, I didn't think I had a big arc in there. No. It's very much a, a face balance sort of style of putter. Mm -hmm. which luckily enough the, the spider is. Yeah. What we've got here also is uh, what we call backswing ratio. So if you imagine the stroke broken into thirds, from set up, one, two, three, we want the backswing portion of that to be around about a third, just over a third. So you're pretty much where we want to be on that. If we go too long on the way back, that can promote deceleration. Yeah. Too short or we might be too, too mm -hmm. quick through it. So yeah. yeah, good thing is green lights all the way through. Just looking at your strike location, pretty yeah. central, nice cluster there. And most modern putters now, they're all getting some face technology in there to help promote yeah. end over end. Um, for putters that don't have that, we are gonna we lose energy in the ball the further off centre we hit it. Yeah. So between quarter and half an inch, we can be losing between five and 10% of uh, ball speed. So yeah. luckily you're, um, you're keeping it quite nice and central. One thing is the lie angle on that current putter is 1.4 degrees toe down. At impact? At impact, yeah. Okay, yeah. So we could do with just making that one slightly more upright for you. So would a good number be level? Yeah. Right. What we're looking at here, this is a side on view. We're looking at how your putter rises through the stroke. Okay, yeah. So we want to be hitting the ball on an upward hit of around about two and a half to th three degrees, 2.4 and upward, which is great. Really nice upward hit there. You are, however, adding 1.7 degrees of loft. Right. So you're turning your three degree putter into a 4.7 degree putter. So the predicted launch of the ball, again, we want that around the two and a half to three degree mark. You're up at 4.2. So the ball might just jump that little bit right, and too then high. Rolling after and that. then get rolling after okay, it. So, yeah. so we could do maybe either trying to look at, is there an issue with how you're you're bringing the putter back to the ball, or maybe let's take a little bit of loft off the putter. Mm -hmm. But from the setup position, one thing I did say the hand seemed a little bit further back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. promote that yeah. extra little bit of loft on there. So this is looking at um, face rotation. Mm -hmm. So on the way back, the, the back of the, um, so the start of the forward swing effectively, yeah. you're 4.6 degrees open, and you rotate that all the way to 8.1 degrees closed at the end of the forward swing. Okay. However, this is the, the important area really this is four yeah. inches before to four inches after so four inches before impact you're 1.8 degrees open mm -hmm. you close that down one and a half degrees we get to 0.3 open and what we're looking to try and get is equal amounts of rotation before and after impact in this area right would it be if you had like someone who's really good at putting would they be more square throughout that whole um like sequence or would that um, not necessarily work? No, like not that? necessarily. That's that's a nice amount of rotation you've got there. Okay. Um, so it's not realistic to think you're going to be completely square no, the whole no, way through. No. Because the, there's angle on the putter and things as well, oh. there's, there's going to be a natural yeah. amount there. Um, I believe the guys on tour are looking for around about one and a half each way okay. based on what the SAM um, data's found. So you're, you're pretty close there to be fair. Okay, good. So, and you say green lights and you score really, really nicely on that. No, overall summary, it looks pretty decent. Good. It's going to be smaller tweaks here and there mm. that are going to help help more. Uh, in terms of the, the style of putter, I think face balanced is, is where we need to be looking. So that one there, when I balance, the face wants to stay nice and nice and square, pointing straight up towards the sky. So that would be face so balanced. That's face balanced. Yeah. 
and that one is designed more for someone who puts straight back straight through, mm -hmm. like yourself. This one here, we have a small amount of toe hang, nice amount of toe hang on there. Yep. So this is now looking for a player that's got a slight sort of the arc stroke coming in. Mm -hmm. So they're going to putt around their body more. So there's more weight in the toe. The heel will go away quickest and the added weight in the toe will come round and basically aid the putter in moving with the, the natural curvature on yep. the stroke. And then we go through to putters like that one there. So that's got, like almost a full toe yeah, hang. Yeah, it's got a lot of toe hang there. So a more severe, right. severe arc. So the more severe the arc, the more toe hang we're really looking at trying to get to get that putter balanced up nicely with the with the stroke uh, throughout. Yeah. And can you get putters of those different levels of toe hang in different head shapes or do all face? Yeah, generally it used to be the bigger head was more, the bigger mallet head was more face balanced. Yeah. Um, but for example, in the Spider, so the one that you, we tested for yourself, mm -hmm. that was a face balanced, but then exactly the same model. They've given us one with, with some toe hang as okay. well. So. Um, and yeah, in, in terms of bladed putters, there are a few out there that are right. face balanced as well. So that's, it's a blade, it's got a tiny, tiny bit okay. of toe yeah. hang there. So we'll see how that one goes there. And I've grabbed these two here um, because they offer us quite a lot from an alignment point of view. Right. They're also very, very stable putters, which based on the way your, your current stroke is, a nice stable putter will complement the nice straight back, straight mm -hmm. through and the putter's just going to want to stay lovely and square uh, throughout the stroke. So, yeah, we'll give, we'll give these a go. Okay. So I then tested three different putters in exactly the same way that we'd tested my Spider. So quite a few putts to get used to them, and then all calibrated with a little gizmo, and then seven putts with each to get the data. The three putters that I tested were the TaylorMade Spider Arc, an Evenroll ER6, and an Evenroll ER1. Right, I'm very aware that this video is getting really long and probably not that interesting. I fell asleep. You fell asleep? If you've made it this far, thank you. But I thought I'd just round up how I found the whole fitting and how it went rather than showing you me testing every individual putter and the individual stats for each one. So after I tested each one of the putters, Rob then takes me through all the results for that individual putter so I can see then if one of them helps me like aim it better but one of them gives me a better stroke or what have you. But yeah, if I show you like all the individual results for each of the putters I tested, we'll be here for an hour and nobody wants that. So overall, I found the putter fitting really interesting and useful. So I had an idea of what my putting stroke was like, but it was really good to have that confirmed by a fact. So what I found most interesting and surprising really was that the putter fitting was actually kind of a lesson as much as it was helping me choose what putter to buy. And that's something that Mark Crossfield quite often says, that custom fitting is about finding out what you're doing and kind of why, as much as it's just saying, you need to buy this club because it's gonna help you. So all of my putting stats for the different categories were good, but I found out that I've got a slight tendency to aim a little bit left. So whatever putter I'm using, if I'm aiming it left of the hole, I'm gonna to have to either compensate from there or I'm gonna be missing a lot of putts on the left. I really like the fact that Rob was completely honest about that. And also he was happy to say that the spider that I took in was performing just as well as any of the putters that I tried on the day. So he wasn't just doing whatever he could to try and flog me a putter. In terms of helping me choose a putter, because obviously the spider isn't mine anyway, so it's not a case of, well, you might as well just keep that one. All of the putters that I tried performed really well, but kind of annoyingly, none of them really performed any better than the rest. So that's good in a way because I was worried that the putter that performed by far and away the best for me would end up being one that I hated the look of and I'd have that kind of wrestle with myself of can I bear to put this in the bag. But it's also slightly tricky because it hasn't really helped me say right that's the putter that I need, that is definitely going to be the best one for me. I could basically take any of those putters that I tested including the spider that I've been using and putt well with them. So would I recommend a putter fitting? Yes, I absolutely would. You'll find out stuff about your setup and stroke that could genuinely save you shots. Apparently, I've done the research, if you're one degree offline with where you're aiming and you obviously hit it on that line, you'll miss a 10 foot putt by 2.1 inches. So it's small numbers, one degree doesn't sound like a lot, but that's the difference between your putt going in and not, so that's a full shot difference. Yes, science! Obviously in my case, from a buying point of view, 
it wasn't one of those where they could say the putty you're using is completely wrong and with this one you're going to be so much better but Rob showed me some data from some previous fittings that I've done with other people where people came in with a putter that completely wasn't right for their stroke and therefore by getting a putter that did suit them better they were able to make pretty significant performance gains. Right, I hope you found that video a little bit interesting. If you are still here, then thank you very much. You've done really, really well. If you are still here, then let me know in the comments down below what putter you're using and why. And until next time, I'll see you in the future. Happy learned how to putt. Uh-oh.